everybody gathering for this incredible event happening today. This, again, is the fifth annual Heroes of Hospice Luncheon. <laughs> And you know, it is such a close, tight-knit community. Everybody knows everybody. You can just feel it in the air. It's kind of a reunion of sorts, celebrating love. There we go. After loss and coming together as community with loved ones. This is a really, really special event. So welcome. It's an honor for us to be here personally. And we should introduce ourselves. I am CJ Ward. And I'm Beth Farnsworth. Yes, we are married. 22 years next week. With two kids, teenage girls. We yep. deserve an award. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know how many people remember when we did this, what, two years ago? Roughly. Yeah. We hosted two years ago, and I cried through all of it. I did too. So are you ready to laugh? Are you ready to cry this afternoon? We're going to have a, a range of emotions for sure for all of us. And this year I came prepared. You brought Kleenex? Yeah, I did. Oh, good, you did. Okay, I'll be using half of that. I'm going to pass it around. I'll be looking closely at all the faces. And if you need Kleenex, I'm going to pass it around. But on a serious note, we want to talk about Hospice of Santa Barbara, also known as HSB, and the, the important message. Now, HSB's mission is to care for anybody experiencing the impact of life-threatening illness or grieving the death of a loved one, and they couldn't do it without the help of their wonderful family of supporters, including all of you that are here today. We have an exciting program today. Today's luncheon will feature the presentation of our Heroes of Hospice Awards, honoring our deserving recipients in three categories, like the Volunteer Award to Dream Foundation's Flower Empower Program. Yes. To our yeah. You can see their truck out front. <laughs> the Partnership Award to Ridley Tree Cancer Center. <laughs> yes. And the Legacy Award to Charlie Zimmer. Oh. Sitting right over here to our left. And we also have a very special video which honors John Aspra, one of the recipients of HSB's Patient Care Services Program. And we are also very excited that Jesse Presendine, a good friend of John's, will be our keynote speaker. Cannot wait to talk with him. Also, as we've already mentioned, the secret's out. The silent auction is going until 1230. So if you haven't put your bids in yet, you still have about a half hour. And at HSB, all of our programs are critical to those in our community who have experienced the loss of a loved one or who find themselves struggling with the news that they or a loved one are suffering from a life-threatening illness. As many of you know that this can be a very devastating time. In order to help people find a way to cope through these difficult times, HSB focuses on the emotional, the social, the spiritual, and the practical needs of the seriously ill and their families. And we know personally a, a handful of really good friends, and HSB has been a literal lifeline for them after loss. Uh, for those diagnosed with a life-threatening illness and receiving medical care from other worthy organizations, HSB provides much-needed support to the people as they undergo treatment and try to regain their health and their path. And for those with terminal diagnosis, HSB helps them find the best ways possible to make the remainder of their lives so meaningful, to find closure and to even find hope along the way. And at your tab tables that you will find a brief questionnaire that we'd love you to fill out. This is, will serve as an entry for the drawing today for two prizes, $100 gift certificates to Jill's Place and Pascucci. Now I would like to introduce our chair of the board of directors, Eric Bowers. Excuse me. Thank you, Beth and CJ. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I'd like to welcome you all to the fifth annual Heroes of Hospice Luncheon. I'd also like to recognize and welcome some of our local officials who have joined us today. Senator Hannah Beth Jackson. <laughs> and 
and Santa Barbara Mayor Helene Schneider. Thank you for being here and your commitment to Hospice of Santa Barbara. I'm also thrilled to announce that this year, we have our largest attendance at this luncheon. 300 guests, 60 more than last year. We have the extraordinary opportunity today to celebrate some special organizations and individuals who have been making people feel special for many years, helping HSB to be a shining light for those who are struggling through incredibly dark times. We call these honorees the Heroes of Hospice. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to our special Guiding Star sponsor, Melinda Goodman Kemp. Also, we're grateful to our luminary sponsors, Barry and Jill Kitnick and the Ridley Tree Cancer Center, as well as to all of our other sponsors, table hosts, and those who have helped underwrite this event. Please notice these generous supporters in today's program. This past year, we also inaugurated a new recognition society named the Shining Light Society for overall annual giving to HSB in 2016 and 2017. I'd like to thank Lillian Lovelace and the James S. Bauer, James S. Bauer Foundation for their generosity to HSB at the supernova level. And I would like to especially thank the Santa Barbara Hospice Foundation for their unsurpassed support. We'd also like to thank all of our wonderful in-kind supporters who assisted with and donated items to our first annual silent auction. Again, that closes at 12.30 if anybody's interested. <laughs> Please note their names in the program. I'd also like to thank our honorary committee who helped make this lunch impossible and to acknowledge the HSB Board of Directors, the HSB Advisory Committee, and the Board Emeritus for their ongoing vision and steadfast support. Thank you. Also to Montecito Bank and Trust, thank you for your support and your staff for working our reception and checkout. And most importantly, to all the HSB staff members and volunteers, thank you for your compassion and commitment to helping the people of our community. You make all of this important work possible. Let's give them all a big round of applause and thank you. somebody else so important in this community and to this organization. It is our pleasure to introduce David Selberg, CEO of HSB. He's a great friend to the community, has done an incredible job here as his tenure at hospice of Santa Barbara since he came on board two and a half years ago. David. I can't not read the script. Because these are your props that I'm about to give you. <laughs> All right, we're going to make you stand there and listen to this, David. Under David's leadership, HSB drafted a new strategic plan which is guiding this organization into the future and helping grow the organization so that it can serve all of the people who need our help in the coming years. With David in charge, HSB is already reaching new heights. There, I said it. Thank you. Wow, this is a full room, isn't it? Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is such a tribute to our honorees um, today. All of you came to love them and for your love of hospice and the good work we've done for over 40 years. And it's humbling and we're so grateful to all of you. And I too, as Eric just said, uh, want to extend an enormous amount of gratitude to all of you here for being here. And um, on behalf of our 35 staff and our volunteers and our amazing board of directors, I'm just deeply grateful for all of you 
um, and, and what you're doing here today with us. Uh, the work at Hospice of Santa Barbara is profound, as all of you, as all of you know. Last year, we served over 1,200 men, women, and children, and that didn't include the thousands of people in organizations, in government, in schools, in healthcare systems that we educate and support. So that work would not be possible without the kind of support we have here today and the partnerships that we have. So let's give ourselves a hand for that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Beth and CJ are absolutely right. A couple years ago, um, their, their emotions were so, so uh, right on their sleeves, which is what I love about the two of you. And when I approached them to come this year and to MC for us, they were like, are you sure? And it's like, yes, that's exactly what we're about. So, so thank you um, very, very much. Um, what we're about, um, what hospice is working hard at right now, um, I'll just share a couple of those things. One is the work we're doing in schools. Schools from Carpinteria uh, to Goleta, Santa Barbara, Santa Inez, even up in Santa Maria area. And tragically, there's been some death of teenagers in our high schools. And our school counselors, um, our staff who are on school campuses, um, work with the school counselors to help the kids that are grieving the death of these teens who they go to school with, we're helping their families. We're helping faculty and, and teachers as they navigate and move through um, such profound loss. Uh, we're also working very hard. Some of you here are from Carpinteria, and Carpinteria is a part of our community that needs and that didn't have a lot of hospice services and a lot of end-of-life care. And so Hospice of Santa Barbara is, is beginning to establish services and programs um, in the coming months and in the coming year in Carpinteria to help serve that, that important part of our community. And also, something we've always done in serving the monolingual Spanish-speaking community, we've always served this community in our counseling programs, in our bereavement services, uh, and what we're working at now and really growing in um, with our staff, in our patient care services, we have a team of social workers that help folks through critical illness, significant illness, and we're starting to really reach out and serve uh, the monolingual Spanish-speaking community across the South County. So those are three, three things that we're working on hard this in the coming year. And again, it's all possible because of the support and partnerships that all of you give us. So thank you all for being here. And I think CJ and Beth, I think you're coming up to begin the next piece. So thank you all. David, thank you. Another round, please, for David and all that he's done for this community. Oh, such heart. It is our honor to introduce a video that we both think really captures HSB's mission in helping people with terminal, life-threatening illnesses, and the support extended to that person, the support extended to loved ones and family as well. The video reveals the story of one such patient, a local man, John Aspra, as he charges his path through his journey with ALS. So let's watch the video. Let me tell you about Johnny Aspra. The stereotypical man's man from Texas, six foot four, 230 pounds, strong cowboy who looks like he should be in a starring role of one of those own Western films. He moved to Santa Barbara 30 years ago where he played and coached football and ran a catering business working as a cowboy chef until late 2014 when things changed for him. It was at that time that Johnny was diagnosed with ALS. And early on in his diagnosis, one of his greatest frustrations was people wondering what it was like to live with a terminal illness. This is a little bit of Johnny's journey. Imagine waking up one day and not being able to do something you've done every day, like tying your shoes. And then day by day, hour by hour, you lose function in your muscles. Your body starts to shut down and eventually you can't brush your teeth, comb your hair, get dressed, bathe yourself. 
And perhaps most importantly, hug and hold close to people you love. For most, the diagnosis is terminal. And upon his diagnosis, Johnny reacted as you might expect. He got angry. He got scared. He negotiated with God, wondering what he had done to deserve such a fate. He felt fear like he'd never felt it before. And then he did something extraordinary. It was on that day that Johnny made a choice, and his choice was to choose to see his diagnosis as a gift. A gift that he'd been given in his words to raise awareness about what was going on in his life, to draw attention to others who are suffering with terminal illnesses, to inspire them to really get out, live, and find enjoyment in the simple things in life. And perhaps most importantly, to inspire others to live with dignity. Since his diagnosis in 2014, Johnny and I have recorded over 70 videos. We call them the Conversations with the Epicurean Cowboy, chronicling his journey, the choices he's made and the experiences he's had. What you're about to watch is a short summary of that. By doing these things, hopefully somebody will see this and realize that there is hope and love and caring human being to human being that is some, something that is simple as watching a few minutes of rambling from a, <laughs> a fat old white guy, you know, that uh, hopefully that you're not, you're not alone. There are people out there like Jesse and I that have love to share and have kind words to share and hopefully you'll get a little bit out of this. I call it uh, stuffing a ton of life in a baby bottle full of time. And that's really what it is. There's a ton of life left in, this, in us all, in me, in us. And there's a baby bottle worth of formula that I'm sucking on, trying to like, man, we gotta get, I'm getting the last drop out of this thing. I would have lived, uh, I would have lived f faster and harder <laughs> nine, nine, nine months ago. <laughs> I would have drank, I would have drank more better, more expensive scotch <laughs> in a responsible way. I would have traveled more. I, would have, I wouldn't have stopped. I wouldn't have gotten, ah, I think I'll just kick back and sit on the couch and watch TV. I would have got up and done more. I would have, I would have tasted it more. I would have, I would have drank in more of what day-to-day -day living really means. I would have not been so hard on the people around me. I would have eased up, eased up on myself and eased up on the people around me. Art brings me so much joy. So again, I want everyone out there watching, take five minutes out of your day, whether you open a bottle of wine or a cold beer or a glass of sweet Georgia tea, it, it's okay. Go somewhere and look uh, at a painting or some old photographs. Um, listen to some music, take care of yourself, be kind to yourself, and learn the pursuit of luxury and comfort. Because it's the quality of life, it's the dignity of living that drives me to overcome and, and just do the best I can for what, what I have. Am I any special or any better than anybody else? No. Not, not at all. Actually, I feel like I'm walking on a high wire without a net. But what drives me is my commitment and responsibility to my family and to my support group. Fear had me by the throat. I don't know why. Fear of dying. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid of the pain. I'm more afraid of, you know, leaving people behind. I'm afraid of the things, you know, like this sitting here. Yeah. I, I work so hard to depress feelings of fear. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing. But once you have to learn that, I've learned that by suppressing those feelings, fear of death, um, 
they can only stay down so long. And after a while, you gotta let them up. Today, for whatever reason, tired. Today, just God picked me to say, today, Asper, I want you dealing with your fears of dying. And whether I was ready for it or not. And it was sobering. And I asked, I, I, I literally said, Aspro, what are you, why are you, where is this coming from and why, why all of a sudden you're afraid? And like I said, it's not fear of pain. It's not fear of, you know, anything. It's, it's worried about leaving the people that I love missing the fun things of life <laughs> you know I've had such a great time I, I, I don't want to miss any parties <laughs> you know I keep going <laughs> going back to Asper you're, you gotta stay positive stay positive because my body will react yeah. will react down to the very cell and tissue of positive and or negative feelings and thought so I'm willing myself so to speak Stay, stay positive, stay healthy, keep going, don't give up. And that, that gets me through the day. And in talking about it, I, I can feel this huge, I can feel this huge, it's just like, <laughs> this is kind of graphic, but it's like flushing the toilet, just like keep rid of everything. Me being able to talk to people out there and tell you, hey, today, you know, I wasn't Superman today. I got up and I, I was afraid, scared. I could either cry myself to sleep and bury myself in the bottom of a dry bottle and go out that way, or I could take the most of what I had and live with it, and I called it living with dignity, with honor and dignity. I, I, I have a choice here. The time that's remaining, I can spread the love that's come my way, I can give it back, and hopefully somebody's out there that can see this and maybe just get a little inkling, just a spoonful of hey, it's, it, it might not be all right, but you can hold yourself with decorum. I think where I'm going to this real quick is that uh, I want to be careful that I run out of things to say or, um, uh, you know, keeping it fresh, keeping it light, keeping it real, keeping it real. I think what I wanted to say real quick is that Somebody asked me how the journey, you know, how are things going? And I told him, I told her, I said, Yvonne, Yvonne, you know, the journey, the journey has been blissfully happy, blissfully happy. The last year and a half, two years, well, how can, ask, but that doesn't make sense. You have a, a debilitating disease, you're, but, the, the, my stomach hurts every day from laughing at guys like you and me. <laughs> but coming my way, from all the people in Santa Barbara, Texas, from all the people on Facebook, thank you, thank you. Th I just can't stop thanking you enough that these last few months, year and a half, two years, in February will go on two years that we were you know, formally uh, diagnosed. And uh, who would have thunk it? It would have been some of the happiest or the happiest years of my life. And I have to credit the people around me giving me love. And that for I'll ever be indebted. And I just hope I can share that with the people out there watching. Thank you for all the, all the love that you shared to me. It's our pleasure now we want to introduce Jesse Brissentine, and he's an internationally recognized life coach, a public speaker, author, motivates, educates, inspires people worldwide, and a wonderful friend. Well, how's lunch? You know, I've watched that video and most of those clips dozens and dozens of times now. 
And I'm still so thankful that John was able to sneak in the disclaimer about how to drink scotch and drink it responsibly. <laughs> what you all just saw was a brief glimpse into about over 200 hours of conversations with the Epicurean cowboy over the last few years. And I'd often leave our times or discussions feeling inspired and educated. I was inspired by how John was choosing to negotiate his journey with ALS, the attitude he was taking, his approach on the world, and how he was making it his mission to talk about it, share with others. And I felt educated because Johnny would often like to shower me with his sayings, some of them you heard in there, his cowboy quips, as you like to call, he liked to call them. One of my favorites that didn't make the final cut was, we're not here for a long time, but we're here for a good time. <laughs> so true, right? Especially living here in Santa Barbara, we know, I think we really appreciate that. As you can see, I'm up here solo today, and that's because Johnny Aspra, the Epicurean cowboy, he took his final ride off into the sunset this past June. He wasn't here nearly long enough, but he definitely made sure he had a good time. And I can proudly attest to this, and I'm sure his family and friends who are here will back me up on this. He did his very best to suck that baby bottle dry. I can remember filming so many of these clips like they were yesterday, as, as easy as I can see all of you right now. None more so than that last clip where he's talking about the last two years being the happiest two years. Both before and after we filmed, John looked at me straight in the eye, and I'm gonna paraphrase because he used a little bit more colorful language than I will. And he said, Jesse, I don't know why and I don't know how, but I mean it when I say it, these last two years, they've been the happiest two years of my life. My words failed me. I wanted to say something really great, like, John, that's awesome. But all I could, all I could think in my head was, how? You know, how is it possible that this larger-than-life figure, at a time in his life where day by day, hour by hour, he's losing the physical ability to do the things that most of us take for granted? At that time, that clip was filmed. He's not feeding himself anymore. He's no longer able to dress himself. Bathing himself had long been gone. Yet he was looking at me and with 100% certainty telling me that the last two years have been the happiest two years of his life. Out of curiosity, how many of you are familiar with ALS? So about half. You know, full disclosure, before this experience with John, my familiarity with it was I had read a book about it and the Ice Bucket Challenge in 2014 which led me thinking that it's like putting some cold water over your head and, and that's it. I have a favor to ask of you all, and I'm really sorry to do this in the middle of lunch, but I, I want to try to give you a glimpse of what day-to-day living is like with ALS. So if you would be, I promise this will only take a minute, just sit up nice and tall in your chairs. And go ahead and take a couple deep breaths and close your eyes. And as you sit here with your eyes closed, I just want you to imagine what a happy day in your life looks like. And notice what images come to mind. Perhaps you see yourself sleeping in late, waking up taking the dog for a walk, having breakfast with your family, maybe going for a run or a hike up in the, on Inspiration Trail. And perhaps the most meaningful part of your day is being able to hug and hold your loved ones. And as you see these images, I just want you to notice the feeling that you feel right now. And I want you to change one thing. I want you to see the images, but take away your physical ability to do everything that you see yourself doing in those images. And notice if the feeling changes. Notice how it feels to see yourself going through the day, no longer able to use your hands to feed yourself, no longer able to dress yourself in the morning, maybe no longer able to hug and hold close your loved ones. And just notice the change. And you can go ahead and open your eyes. Thank you so much for doing that. To this point, that's been the one thing I've found to be able to give people a brief glimpse into what day-to-day -day living is like with ALS. To actually go inward and experience it emotionally just so you could feel and so you can imagine my shock when this guy's looking at me going through that and telling me he's living the happiest two years of his life. Hence the how. And I realized that there's three things that Johnny was doing that was making that possible. Number one, John had decided on and was living out a life purpose. 
a life purpose that, in his words, was to raise awareness about ALS and to inspire and empower others to live and to live with dignity. Number two, John had surrounded himself with family and friends, people who were fully committed to loving and supporting him throughout his journey. And number three, he had connected up with Hospice of Santa Barbara. Any of you who have ever had some sort of life-altering event happen, be it a sudden death in the family, somebody gets sick, whatever the case may be, you know that when it happens, it literally hits you like a blizzard. Or maybe a microburst since we're here in Santa Barbara. <laughs> You're carrying on one day and life just seems normal, the sun's shining, it's beautiful outside, then you get hit with like almost white out conditions. But instead of it being snow and sleet pelting you in the face, it's human emotion, it's fear, it's uncertainty, it's anger, it's all those things. It's the wondering what ifs and what are you supposed to do. If you could have a guide that can help you negotiate that trail, the trail that most of us have never been on before, what a gift that would be. And for Johnny, Hospice of Santa Barbara was that gift. Coming in and literally taking him by the hand and acting as a guide, helping him navigate through the complexities of the medical insurance in insurance system, providing him ongoing emotional support and counseling services, and just doing little things like making sure the day-to-day -day stuff was taken care of, the day-to-day -day stuff that all of us have to take care of, it doesn't matter if we're sick or not, to make sure our life functions, appointments we have to schedule, appointments we had to keep, and he had a lot of doctor's appointments. And perhaps most importantly, making sure he had a ride to get from downtown over to Brophy Brothers, <laughs> where he'd go for happy hour. What I observed in this time with John is that HSB provided really the foundational support for him to live the happiest two years of his life. Because they made sure that the day-to-day -day stuff was taken care of, because they made sure that the support systems were there, what it freed John up to do is really focus on the first two things. Living out his life purpose, raising awareness about ALS, and inspiring and empowering others to live and to live with dignity, and maximizing the time he had with his family and friends. That was what led to the happiest two years of his life. John would, actually before I say that, I, I wanna just give you full disclosure here too. Before meeting and working, meeting some of the people at HSB and going on this journey with John, when I would hear the H word, hospice, I like perhaps some of you used to think, uh-oh that death and dying is falling right away. And what I've learned through this journey with John and going on it with him is the work that the people at Hospice of Santa Barbara do is not just about death and dying. I think more than anything, it's about life and living. Specifically, empowering our loved ones to live and to live with dignity. I have one final quip, cowboy quip, I wanna share from you that comes with John before we switch gears here. I remember one day John and I were finishing up filming and he was asking me what was going on for the rest of the day and I looked at my watch and started reciting all the busyness of the day. He stopped me and said, Jesse, Jesse, calm down. Calm down. I said, John, you don't understand. I don't like to calm down. Let's got to get somewhere. And he said, remember that when you see that clock, the seconds tick off a clock. That's not just seconds ticking off your clock. That's seconds ticking off your life. We're not here for a long time. So we damn well better make it a good time while we are. That's my little story about the conversation with the Epic Hearing Cowboy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now we're gonna switch gears. All of us know that we're here to celebrate and honor the amazing people that have gone through this organization and you've all heard it said already, so I'm gonna reiterate very quickly, that Hospice of Santa Barbara is unable to do the things they do without the support of everyone in this room. I think it was David said earlier that last year they had, they had, already, they had helped 1,200 people. Those are 1,200 people who were directly helped. That doesn't count the dozens of people like myself and friends and family of John who are indirectly helped because that they're able to provide the support to our loved ones 
that then we get more high quality time with them. With Hospice of Santa Barbara being completely reliant on all of you to provide the services they provide to the 1,200 people last year, and I think what I was told is over 1,300 this year, and they're projecting over 1,500 the following year, you can see that there's a growing need for what they do, which means that it comes to all of us to be able to step forward and help them do exactly that. If you all look down at your tables, you all have these little pledge cards here. And if you could just find it, hold it up, please. And I know we've all been to these things before, and it's kind of, yeah, I know how the pledge card works, but just humor me for a minute. Find it, hold it up high, and on the back of it, you'll see you have a number that's unique to you. 332 is mine, which means you cannot use mine to make your own pledge. <laughs> I already called my bank and told them. <laughs> but what you can do, what you can do is when there's, a, when there's an amount offered today, what you can do is you can raise, use your hand, raise your card, and by doing so, you're gonna be empowering others to live and live with dignity. You think about how it feels, if any of us have ever been in that position where, I was having a conversation with somebody on the way in here today, and they're talking about how people think Hospice of Santa Barbara is so great and that it's free. And then he said, well, that's true, but that's free because somebody else already paid for it. <laughs> we all know how good it feels to have a stranger buy us a cup of coffee or do something kind. Multiply that by a factor of a bazillion, and that's what it feels like to do something kind for a loved one, somebody who may not know that they're going to need the services that these guys provide in the future. Our first pledge amount is going to be $5,000. I see a couple of you with itchy trigger fingers, and I appreciate that. But before we go and start shooting our hands up, I want to put this into context what $5,000 does. The patient care services program, which is what John utilized throughout his last few years, it costs approximately $5,000 to provide that patient care service to one person. So the $5,000 you donate today is going to support programs exactly like that. To get us started, Linda Yowitz has already stepped forward and made a generous donation of $5,000. Yes. If you look around, there's spotters at your tables. Spotters, if you just want to raise your hand so everybody knows. They're going to be taking down your donation amounts. And then at the end, the nice people at Montecito Bank and Trust will be helping check you out. Who would like to be the first one to join Linda at the $5,000 level? Lin oh, wait, we got one right there. Thank you so much. And then also, Lynn Cantley. Lynn Cantley and Bob Klein, too. Thank you. Dr. Stephen Jose. Dr. Stephen Jose, thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to step forward at the $5,000 level? Oh, right back there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. You guys are amazing. Our next level is 2,500. And before we get to that, I, I want to tell you a story that I think really, it's a great example of what $2,500 will do through Hospice of Santa Barbara. I was going for a walk with a friend last week, and we, were, we happened to be talking. We were up on Douglas Preserve, and he, we were asking sure what was going on, what was coming up, and I told him about today. He grabbed me by the arm, looked me in the eye, and he said, I, I have to tell you. He said, for the last two years, I've been going up and getting counseling support from HSB. He said, when my dad died of cancer, I wasn't sure where to go. They welcomed me with open arms. And he said, they have yet to turn me away. That's the difference between you all supporting them and having it be a government where they might say, OK, one to two times, you're not done being sad. No more grief for you. <laughs> and he said, but they started helping him before that. He said when his dad started to get really sick, they, they struggled with this role reversal place where he as a son was now having to help his father get up out of bed and move and, and get around. So he's basically becoming the parent and now his, his father's a child. And he said it was this real big struggle of relationship for them about 
how, how are they going to be? And he said it, it caused him a lot of stress, and it caused his dad a great deal of stress too because his dad was dying, but he felt like he wasn't able to be a dad. He said one conversation he had with one of the HSB volunteers who came over to help out empowered him to be able to change the dynamic around so even at a time when he's helping his dad through the final stages of life, his dad was still able to be a dad. And he said when his dad finally passed, he said there was no words unsaid, but he said he felt so much love in his heart. The $2,500 pledge you make today is gonna to support programs like that, that provide maybe us or our loved ones with ongoing grief support and will not turn them away. Who would we like to be the first one to raise their hand at 2,500? Thank you. We had a couple back there. You here. Can you, can you guys keep your hands up, please, too, just so they have time? Thank you. Just hold them up. Make sure the spotters can see them all. Did you guys get? Thank you. Anyone else for 2,500? Fantastic. Thank you. The next level is 1,000. When I have to tell you all, this is, it's really special for me to be up here and be a part of this because part of what you saw in the video when John began this, he, part of him getting on camera is he had this goal of his to be able to raise awareness, but also hopefully at some point raise money to help people like himself. I think there's something that any of us who have ever been around a loved one who goes through that journey knows that there's a certain amount of humility that comes with it. And you start to realize some of the things that we take for granted and how much we need love and support from other people. So to be up here and to see you all supporting an organization that he believes so strongly in, it's, it's really quite an honor. And I know that I've seen some examples from meeting with Charles and David here about what $1,000 does. $1,000, it's approximately the amount it takes to support a child who's going to parent who's lost a parent, a loved one, and going for grieving, grieving services for them for about a year. So I want to put that in context about what the pledge level you'll do right now. Who would like to be the first one to raise their hand really high so if swatters can see it for 1,000? Thank you so much. We have one over there. Thank you. Keep your hands up. Yes, and please cheer for them. we got a few over here. Thank you. Keep the hands up. Can you, can you all hold your up just to make sure we got them all? There's a one there. Keep the hands up. I think your spotter will let you know up back there. You know, I, I, I watched the other day a, a video while you all are holding your hands up. I watched the day the other video of a professional auctioneer doing these and you know, things. And I thought, well, anybody could do that. Being up here and pointing like this, I, it's hot. <laughs> Did we get everybody? Okay, fantastic. Next level, we got two more. 500. I have a quick story about 500, and it, this one is especially near and dear to my heart. Most of us have probably experienced a loss of some sort in our life. And I think that not that it makes that any loss is harder or easier than another one, but I think that if you have a, a loss in your life, especially if somebody who's been a constant present in your life, presence in your life, a spouse, a significant other, imagine what that would be like. You know, waking up one day and, and this person you've been around for two years, five years, 15, 50 years is suddenly gone. In May of this year, a woman who is my one of my closest friends in all practical purposes, my Santa Barbara mom, died unexpectedly. Her husband and her were getting ready to go out to dinner the same way they'd done hundreds of times in over 48 years of marriage. She came out of the room complaining about a headache. He went to give her ice and he left the room, came back and she had collapsed. A short time later, she had passed. I can't imagine what that must feel like for him. And when I had dinner with him last month, we were sitting down talking, and this is a man who, for all practical purposes, like my Santa Barbara father, especially more so since I lost my dad a few years ago. And 
we're talking, and he tells me without prompt that he's been going up to the Hospice of Santa Barbara and utilizing the Widow and Widowers program as well as the individual counseling services. He said, I asked him, he said, so, you know, how's it going with it? Is it helpful? And he looked at me with tears in his eyes, and he said he was able to take three things out of her closet and donate it to a local charity. Three things doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a monster step forward at that time in life of move, for healing, for moving forward, and I believe especially in, in committing to moving forward in a way that he's gonna continue to live and honor her legacy and how he lives. I think that's what $500 will do if we put in context like that, the $500 donation you give today is gonna to help programs like the Widow and Widowers program to help our loved ones who have, who have lost someone they love. Who would like to be the first one to raise their hand for 500? Awesome, just hold them up high, we have a few. And thank you so much. Keep them up high. We got a few back there, did you? Okay, great. Anyone else? Everybody? Awesome. Last one, and then you all can go back to eating. I appreciate you giving me your attention. 100 bucks. You've all, we've, we've said it a bunch now. We know, we know what the, the money goes towards. We know the amazing services. I've, I've sat there and listened to everybody applauding and clapping, and I, I, I know that you're all fans, and I believe that all of you are here because you probably enjoy the, the view and the food, but more so you've, you've probably had a positive experience with the work that everybody does here. There's 300 of us in the room. I know quite a few of you have already donated. The, the $100 that we donate, that's giving up our Starbucks a day for a month. I mean, really, that's about what it works out to, right? Less than the cost of the ticket to come here. And it's gonna go to a lifetime of helping other people too. Friends, family, loved ones. The, they can't do what they do without the, the love and support from all of you. Who would like to be the first one to raise their hand for $100? Thank you. Let's get those cards up. Thank you. Come up. Be sure, be sure to hold them up high. Yeah, be sure to hold them up high just so everybody gets them down. Keep them up high. Yeah, everybody's still writing. So and until the spotter just gives you the thumbs up, if you can keep it up, wave it around. Make sure they see it. There's some there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Double wave. I like that. Keep the cards up. I think that's better. I think that is. Oh, we got a couple more. Thank you for keeping your cards up in the back. Good. Awesome. Real quick, real quick, real quick, and then I'll, I'll be done, I promise. One, a couple of final things. Remember, uh, if you made a donation, Montecito Bacon Trust will help process that at the end. There are pledge cards on your tables, so if you want to talk it over with your spouse, significant other, you want to look and see if your company does a matching donation, whatever that is, take that home, fill it out, you can send it into HSB. And I, with all my heart, thank you so much. I appreciate your attention, I appreciate your time, thank you. Please, one more round of applause for Jesse. He did a great job. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you for sharing John's story. And uh, oh, another reminder to take it all in every day, right? All of us. And we know that HSB has been around now for 40 years. And as David so eloquently pointed out, Jesse as well. So many people, so many organizations, part of this, making this such a huge community gem. And we are here today to honor three heroes 
Yeah, Heroes of Hospice Awards are presented every year to somebody who just goes above and beyond and does everything to help people in this community. And we're going to start off. Beth, you're going to start off with the first one. Okay, we would like to begin by presenting the Heroes of Hospice Partnership Award to the Ridley Tree Cancer Center. Accepting the award will be Lady Leslie Ridley Tree. This cancer center opened just a week ago serves as a regional destination for oncology services, ranking with the best major treatment centers in the nation, ensuring the diversity of superior cancer care to patients close to home, regardless of means to pay. And we are honored to have with us today, Lady Leslie Ridley Tree. And there is a reason why the Cancer Center now bears her name, and that reason is that she is a tireless supporter of many causes important to the Santa Barbara community. She has put her resources to work to make Santa Barbara a community where every life can be enriched and lived well. The new logo is a tree that symbolizes the start of something strong and beautiful. A new life, a healthy emergence delivered with the warmth and caring of the Ridley Tree Cancer Center family. It's a joy and a privilege to be here. And I accept this award for, in price for all the people at this table in front, for Fred Cass, for Dr. Rensenoff, for people who aren't here, for all the people that helped build the Cancer Center, which is the most beautiful building, which houses the most wonderful people to take care of you and your friends to remember the people that have gone before, to think of the people that will be cared for with compassion and loving care. And we are so blessed to have that building and having the people in it to take care of us. So with great joy and with great honor, I accept this privilege and I thank you all for your parts in it because you've all helped build that building I hope you don't have to use it. I hope your friends don't have to use it, but I hope you'll tour it and raise your hands in joy that we have the most wonderful building housed with the most wonderful equipment so all may share in it. So God bless us all. Thank you, Lady Ridley Tree. Oh. How many hearts she squeezes in this community, countless, for all that she has done. Next, we would like to present the Heroes of Hospice Volunteer Award to the Dream Foundation's Flower and Power Program. We have quite a few volunteers. You would all stand. We would like to acknowledge you with a round of applause. Talk about a wonderful feel-good program, just is spreading the love, support in so many different ways. Thank you for all that you do as well. And also want to give a special acknowledgement. I know he's here, I saw him earlier, Tom Rollerson. Tom, will you stand please? There you are, I see you. I see that handsome hair. Thank you for all that you've done. The Dream Foundation's Flower and Power program is a Santa Barbara-based, volunteer-driven program that delivers floral bouquets, fresh-baked cookies, uh, made by Flower and Power Luncheon Committee member Robin Himovitz. <laughs> there she is over there. Fine chocolates provided by Chocolat du Calabrisen. Did I say that right? 
and cards handmade by school children and other groups to people in hospitals, hospices, cancer centers, and their homes. And since the inception of 1994, the program has served thousands of community members by providing more than 100,000 bouquets, cookies, chocolates, and cards. Roughly 20 Flower and Power volunteers per week assemble and deliver up to 150 bouquets. And we would like to welcome Dream Foundation CEO. He's a hire. And Valerie Banks, Flower and Power Coordinator. Both of you up, please, to accept the award. I love the statistics that you shared with us. Oh, you yeah. care about it well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So today we are representing a very large group of people. We are representing Dream Foundation's board, staff, council members, let's see if I get them all here, uh, sponsors, advocates, and most importantly, our volunteers. Um, I'd like to thank everyone at Hospice of Santa Barbara for this recognition. What an honor, and especially to be in the company of such distinguished recipients, such as the Ridley Tree Cancer Center and Charles Zimmer. So we are absolutely thrilled. Over the years, we've had the privilege of working closely with numerous organizations serving our hospice and medical community. Many of them are here today. We've been providing end-of-life dreams as well as floral deliveries. But our work with Hospice of Santa Barbara has been particularly meaningful. We have worked with them for over 134 final dreams in our history of patients that they've referred to us. And I didn't know this when I came here today, but one of those was actually, thanks to a referral from Hospice of Santa Barbara, it was a dream for John Aspra. And I'm so happy to see some of his friends here today. Um, and before you ask, his dream that he came to us was actually a football dream. Um, for you Trojans in the room, uh, it was to see his beloved rivalry between USC and Notre Dame. So, <laughs> HSB also participates on our Medical Advisory Council, and just recently the hospice team provided an intensive grief counseling services to all of our Dream Foundation staff. And I have to say personally, I found it incredibly effective and meaningful and absolutely wonderful. So I thank you all for being such a wonderful community partner. People often ask me about the Flower and Power program and what I say is because we were founded in Santa Barbara, thanks to the help of a very generous community, we have the Flower and Power program to give back to that community by delivering flesh, fresh floral bouquets to those in need. And this work is important. According to a recent research study at Rutgers University, every single person who received flowers as part of an experiment had a positive response. Every single person. Patients in, it's, it's great, right? <laughs> Patients in hospitals with flowers in their room have shorter hospital stays, lower ratings of pain, anxiety, fatigue, lower blood pressure, and more positive feelings. This program is touching lives in immeasurable ways because of the collective work that our community does for it, in particular our volunteers. And as you heard earlier, it's absolutely remarkable that since 1994, we have delivered over 100,000 bouquets. <laughs> and I know it was mentioned, but I'm just going to say it again. We would not have achieved any of this without the vision of our founder, Tom Rollerson. <laughs> Flower and Power receives no state or federal funding. We rely solely on contributions and grants. And several of this year's program sponsors are here with us today. And it is through their generosity that we anticipate this year delivering 8,000 bouquets. So please join me in thanking Bob Filotti and Diane and Tim Brown. They have been long-term supporters.
And just one thing I'd like to mention, in case you don't know this, this program is a community-wide program. It is open to everyone in our community. So if you know of anyone that you feel should be a recipient, a recipient of our services, please call our offices and put their name on the list, and we will get a flower delivery to them quickly. Um, this award really belongs to our dedicated volunteers, and so I'm going to have Valerie Banks, our Flower and Power Coordinator, say a few words just about them. Oh, it's heavy. Thank you, everyone. Um, our Flower and Power would not be exist without the unconditional support of our wonderful volunteers, which are here today and here, and the generous growers in Carpinteria. As, you, as some of you might not know, Santa Barbara County, has, which is rich in agricultural history, is the largest cut flower grower in the state, which is where we get our flowers from. The growers in Carpinteria have donated over 1,900 buckets of flowers in just the last year. Um, and when I say 19,000 buckets, a bucket of flowers approximately is about 100 flowers. So think about that, and that's what we do with them. Our volunteers have spent over 3,400 hours last year alone making bouquets, delivering them to local recipients from Goleta to Carpinteria. We have volunteers from all walks of life. Some are mothers and daughters from national charities leagues, from high school clubs, and other corporate employees of people that heard about through their friends. Some have been volunteering for over 20 years. Last year alone, our volunteers created over 7,000 bouquets, and about 400 of those were delivered to people referred by Santa Barbara Hospice. We've started working with Santa Barbara Hospice, Hospice of Santa Barbara, <laughs> together in 2010 to bring joy and a friendly visit to those who refer to us. We are currently delivered to 27 of those individuals, and we also delivered to John flowers every single week. And he was not only referred by Hospice of Santa Barbara, he was referred by about four other people in the community who called me and said, this is an incredible man, we need to deliver him flowers. My delivery person went to his door and said, he catered my wedding back in whatever. So when they said it was John, I really touched me close. So, why the, so it's great. While the flowers are really only a heart of the program, our recipients get more than a bouquet of flowers. They get a hand delivered with a smile, along with flowers, each recipient get, receives a handmade card, delicious chocolates, and a chocolate chip cookie that have accompanied each flower delivery for over 20 years. Each one of you will find this cookie on your table today. Thank you to Robin, betterly known to us as the cookie lady, and to her husband, Roger, better known as the butter man. Robin does, has been doing this for over 20 years, and I appreciate everything she does. Thank you all for you know, the support of this program, and if you'd like to ever come and volunteer, every Saturday morning, 8 o'clock. So thank you again. All right, next we would like to present to a very special individual. I know how special he is because I've been sitting next to him during lunch. Super, super nice man. We are proud to present the Heroes of Hospice Legacy Award to Charles Zimmer, longtime supporter and advocate for Hospice of Santa Barbara. And of course, many of you in the audience know Charles well. He began his journey with HSB back in June of 1979, back when he became one of the organization's early executive directors and stayed in that position for more than 10 years. And currently he serves on HBS, HSBC's Human Resources Advisory Committee and is on the Emeritus Board member. He is leadership, oh, his leadership and numerous roles he has played with the organization continue to help shape Hospice of Santa Barbara into the fantastic nonprofit that it is today. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Zimmer. A real gentleman. Thank all of you very, very much for this <laughs> honor. Uh, 
words sometimes are hard to come by when you're made the focus of things like this. And it's been some special organization that has really been the core of your life for, well, 38 years ago, as they said, and it, I started there. And that's before some of you were born. <laughs> But I am pleased and honored to accept this award and to thank Hospice and Anna Barbara for doing so. Uh, I feel very privileged to be honored this way. As all of you have heard today, Hospice of Santa Barbara is a special group. It's a special organization that does wonderful work for people who have only one criterion, and that's need that they need to have care given to them to help them through difficult times. We started when I became executive director with just five people in the little gray house up the driveway at 330 East Carrillo. It's still there, I think. I'm not sure what's in it anymore, though. But it has now grown because of people like all of you. This award may be for me, but it's really for all the people along the line who made it happen. From Alice Heath, who was the founding visionary of the organization, to Gail Rink, whose many of you have known and who is responsible for its current location up on the Riviera and for its model of compassionate care freely given. She, with her dedication and inspiration, she made it possible for us to be what we are today. Those two stand out in my mind, but it's also all the members of the board of directors, the staff, the volunteers, the ladies of the auxiliary, and donors of all of you who make it possible for Hospice of Santa Barbara to have grown and to become what it is today. And God love each one of you for doing your part, for this legacy is yours also. I will go happily to my grave claiming this legacy for myself, <laughs> but know that you are also a part of it and you can claim part of that legacy too. Thank you, each and every one of you, for what you've done past, present, and still to come. Thank you, and God bless each of you. Thank you. It's just perfect that he is the Legacy Award honoree. Charles, thank you for everything that you have done, the legacy that you have built. So once again, we want to give everybody a round of applause, but we also want to have everybody come up to the podium so we can have photos taken. All the awardees, please, if you would, come back up. Not everybody, everybody. I should have done our little selfie stick. That'd be a great photo. Thank you very much for coming out today. We appreciate your time. Thank you so, so much. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everybody.